Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. Real Estate Coaching Radio is the nation's number one daily radio show for realtors who demand authentic, real-time coaching. Get ready for fluff-free, unfiltered, full-strength honesty about what's truly working to get you into action, helping others, and making money now in today's real estate market. Now to our hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Hey, welcome back. I'm running solo today. Julie is actually at Zoe's school, and they're having her belated birthday party, as some of you guys know, our little daughter just turned five. So listen, I have a really great show for you guys today. We're going to pick up where we left off yesterday. The theme is don't decrease the goal, increase the effort. And this is part two. And why are we focusing on that? It's simple because this year is going to be presenting to a lot of you a lot of challenges. I know, for example, I was just on the uh, coaching call with a great uh, coaching client named Lena Jacobs. And Lena was telling me, Tim, in my market, the market's doing great. We have local employers moving in. We have Mazda's building a new uh, facility. We have, you know, da 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 So a lot of good things happening. And she said, I don't think in our market we're going to experience much of a slowdown, but I already have seen a decrease in the amount of uh, depre- or, I'm sorry, in, uh, uh, appreciation in real estate. And I said, Lena, you're absolutely correct. And, and that's the reason we tell all of you guys that every market, there is no national market. You've heard you know, a lot of people say this, and it's so true. There's no national market. Your local market is going to uh, essentially react differently than, say, for example, New York City, or say, for example, lots of LA, or for example, Arizona, Scottsdale, or Austin. So for the most part, what we're going to see in the markets across the country is a decrease in home values. Okay, be clear on that. A decrease in appreciation, certainly. And what we're also going to see in a lot of markets, and it's already happening, is a significant loss in home values. New York City, Greenwich, Connecticut, Miami, Florida, lots of L.A. We're going to start seeing some of the luxury high-rise uh, developments in downtown Austin. Maybe you guys are living in the Midwest like where Julie and I are from. So you're going to experience similar things. So your markets are all going to be reacting differently due to the slowdown. This is the reason it's critical that you pay very close attention to what's actually happening. A lot of the great office managers and team leaders and, and folks like that are uh, staying, keeping you guys completely informed about what's happening. And if not, if you don't have that, or if the information's not as um, drilled down as you'd like it to be, learn how to use your MLS because the MLS is going to give you the greatest you know, indicator or greatest predictor of what's about to happen. Look for new listings, look for expired listings, and look for price reductions, look for days in the market, things like that. That's going to tell you everything you need to know. Now remember, and I keep on mentioning this, and I'm going to mention it every single time because a lot of you guys are just retuning into us because a lot of you don't work the last part of the year. So um, we did a series of uh, four podcasts, and the podcasts were called, you know, the, it, basically here's all you got to do. Go to timandjulieharris.com. The little search uh, window is on the upper right-hand uh, part of the screen where there's a little hourglass. Put in the word reset, and then I want you to listen to the four podcasts we did about four months ago that are talking about the, uh, the you know, basically the five stages of the real estate reset. We researched this significantly. That actually, this information is part of our new book that's coming out uh, mid-year in 2019. But go back and listen to those podcasts. Listen to educate yourself because you need to know how to identify where each of your markets are and each of your market segments are, and you also need to be able to explain this to your sellers when you go on listing presentations. It's not enough in a market like this to just basically bring a CMA. You've got to explain to the seller what's actually happening. So I've made it easy for you. Not only have, do we have the podcast there, but you have the notes from our podcast, which Julie and I actually use to explain our points. Download the points. Use them when you're talking to sellers. We're doing our best to prepare you guys. So a lot of you are nervous, scared, and a lot of you, I'm going to be honest with you, should be because you're ill-prepared for this market. We're not going to bullshit you. We never do. That's the reason you guys listen. You're not prepared to know how to talk to sellers about, you know, as uh, Diane Ramirez in our superstar interview last year said so eloquently, your, your sellers are still focused on aspirational pricing, right? You know, overpricing. And if you don't know how to talk to a seller about how to position their house on the market so that it correctly reflects the buyer's expectations, you see how what I just said versus lower the price? You see what I just said as far as knowing how to say things? So sellers will be receptive to what you have to say. If you don't know how to do that, you will not survive. Would you like me to make it any more clear to you? And if your, market has been, if your business has been buyer-dependent, 
get ready to hear the onslaught of excuses why they don't want to buy, why they're not willing to pay a price, you know, whatever that price is, why they're nervous about pricing, why they're nervous about this, that, or the other thing. And, that, and as I explained in that, uh, the series of podcasts Julie and I did about the real estate reset, the thing you start to see in phase two, which is what most markets are in right now, is you're going to start seeing appraisers that are going to start kicking back home values. Maybe you think you have this place in contract, you're listing, it's perfectly priced, everything's in contract. The sellers, the buyers, everyone's, nope, doesn't appraise. Then what do you do? Many of you have no clue. You think you're going to get that seller to rep- you know, take a lower? You think you're going to get that buyer to pay more? You're going to have to know how to survive in this market or you won't make it. Here's the exciting part, and I mean this with all sincerity. There's a, a quote. You guys can Google this. It's from a, um, I don't even know how old this guy is. I think 1700s. His name was Baron von Rothschild. And this is only part of the quote, uh, it's when there's blood on the streets, buy real estate. Now, that's part of the quote, but the gist is, is when there's times of stress and duress, you can, there's lots of opportunity because there's such a dearth of knowledge and people emotionally react and they don't logically know how to actually survive in the market. So in real estate, you see a lot of people, brokers are the worst at this. Big brands are the worst at this. Um, you know, anybody who reports on real estate, any real estate coach, the worst at this. You saw this happen for all of the second half of last year. None of them wanted to talk about the changing market. And said, and only Julie and I were talking about it. We would literally do a podcast based on actual facts about, you know, a changing market, about reducing this, the whole thing. We'd give actual statistics. And the next day I would read on some, you know, national real estate, whatever, how the, it's the best time ever. Okay, so what happens is our industry, is scared of a changing market because most of the industry, here's why, operates on such tiny margins in their businesses that if the market adjusts, their businesses are wiped out. That is what's going to happen. Are you listening? So if you're a broker, if you're an office manager, if you're a team leader, if you're an individual agent, if you are only hearing us for the first time, understand that what we're telling you is uh, it's normal. This is the type of thing that happens when the market adjusts, as we say when it goes into phase two. We saw this back in 07. We saw this back in the, you know, the two recessions before that when we were, Julie and I were coaching. It's normal to see people who are successful in a seller's market, which is what most of you have been experiencing for a long period of time, it's normal for those people to not survive the change to the new market. That happens all the time because they, they wait too long to make changes. They wait too long to realize the things that they were doing before to generate business aren't working now. And that's the other thing a lot of you guys got to realize. The buying buyer leads fad, the social networking fad, and in other words, these ideas that you guys were trying to and, – and beating your heads against the wall, trying to implement, spending millions and not, and, you know, if not billions of dollars on this in industry, trying to really get to work – to generate leads. They worked, but it won't work now because what happens is is these ideas get oversaturated. Yet people will still talk about them because they don't have anything new to talk about. And if you get into the business and you start listening to somebody telling you how you need to market yourself, how you need to start branding yourself, how you need to start buying buyer leads, and you start doing it all the while the market's changing, what they're doing is they're telling you information that's completely obsolete, but because you're new in the business, or because you just don't know any better, you don't realize you're following a path that's going to result in you just spending a bunch of money. Here, I'll give you guys a little hint. Anytime anybody tells you that you have to do whatever it is they're asking you to do with the expectation of no tangible results for six months, a year, you have to see that it's bullshit. Anytime anybody tells you, look, this is an investment, we're selling you an investment, it's going to take 90, 120 days, six months, maybe a year before you, whatever, see any results. You have to see it for what it is and don't do it. There's, that should be all of your rule. And, by the way, if anyone ever tries to sell you buyer leads, as we've been saying for the past forever, don't do it. Don't buy buyer leads. Guys, listen. The greatest times of change also create the greatest opportunities. And that's what we're experiencing now. You should all write that down and remember that so you're not scared, so you're not nervous. Because as agents start to come out of their, you know, their uh, winter hibernation, as brokerages start to, start to spin up again for the spring, you're going to see the industry on a whole as an ill-prepared emotionally and financially for this changing market. 
People are going to come back to the market thinking everything's going to operate like it did before, and it's not. And you're going to see people panic. I do not want any of you, our loyal podcast listeners and coaching clients, to panic. Remember what I told you. The greatest fortunes in the history of history are always made during the greatest times of change. There are no exceptions to that. Okay, you guys want to test me on it? Industrial Revolution, Technological Revolution, the Gutenberg Press, all these other things during the greatest times of change are when the greatest opportunities are to make fortunes. You're in one now. And the way you leverage it is you have to have knowledge that other people don't have, and you cannot allow yourself to basically be pulled under by the tsunami of emotional Mickey Mouse that you're going to start experiencing because of the changing market. People will overreact, and then they won't take action other than more overreaction. That's what's going to happen. It happens every time. It's so predictable. Please don't force yourself to learn what I'm telling you is true. Just accept what I'm telling you is true and take action. And look, we've made it as easy as we can for you. There's two things you guys need to do. Get a copy of our real estate treasure. Actually, I'll give you everything. I'll give you seven free books. Just go to freecoachingcallsforagents.com, and when you request a free coaching call, not only will you be entitled to talk to one of our new member coaches, but we're also going to give you six books. The ones I want you to read first, you're going to get these digital sent to you, Real Estate Treasure Map, which is your fill-in-the-blank business plan, and you're also going to get Think and Grow Rich for Real Estate. Those two things are, should be your, you know, your, sort of your combination to start your mindset off and your business plan off in the right direction to start the year. All right? You guys with me on this? So if you need us for anything, and look, we're going to get to point number one here in a second. And remember, if you need me for anything, always feel free to email me or Julie. It's Tim at TimAndJulieHarris.com or Julie at TimAndJulieHarris.com. All right, so yesterday we were talking about, you know, we were talking about basically the psychology behind why people procrastinate, and Julie had lots of examples uh, again, this is information that we spent that we you know are using in our new book, which is coming out mid year but here 's what I want you to focus on here 's your actual two thousand and nineteen uh, action steps. And I'm going to read these and, and we're going to you know vamp on them a little bit for the most part they 're pretty clear. Point number one, and this is really important: accept nothing less than the goals you set for yourself in the five areas of life family, financial, physical, spiritual, educational. Post pictures of yourself having, doing, and seeing and being these goals. Look at those pictures every day when you begin and end. Now, what am I talking about? When you download the real estate treasure map, you're going to have a section in it where you're going to be picking. Uh, there's five areas of goals in life, and, and I'll read those to you guys again. You've heard these before. These are not. This is not like the five areas of life is what sort of been you know, all the way back to the Bible, by the way, these are essentially the foundations for the five areas of life that are the foundational areas where you set goals, family, financial, physical, spiritual, and educational. Now, I'm going to make, it, uh, make a point about that. Some of you are going to be stymied but depending on how old you are, and I did say old you are, to set, for example, spiritual goals or to set, for example, family goals. You might be at a different uh, time in your life where maybe financial goals are more important to you, or more, maybe family goals are more important to you. Like if you're in your 20s or your 30s and you're trying to get your house, financial house in order, you know, and you're trying to literally get your house in order and start a family, well, those are going to be where you're going to focus your efforts. And maybe the opposite is, is true, too. Maybe the kids are gone. Everything's paid off. Maybe you're, um, you know, financially you're set. And so your area of, of focus might be on different – you guys get the point? So when you're going through the project, don't rack your brain and thinking, I have to have ten goals for every one of them. You don't. You might have no goals for one of the sections. It's totally and completely normal. Um, and uh, depending on where you are in life, you might decide, for example, I'll tell you right now, one that all of you guys should have, is have very defined physical goals. So I'll give you an example. Now write this down in your notes. A goal is a dream with an action plan. A goal is a dream with an action plan. In other words, it starts out as a dream, but the action plan is what makes it real. So physical is always the easiest to talk about. Here I'll give you – follow this one. There is probably, of the tens of thousands of you listening – Three people that don't need to lose approximately 20 pounds. Statistically, that's basically how overweight the average American is right now. All right, so where do you go with that? Here's your action plan. I'm going to give you one. I want you to join your local Orange Theory Fitness. Depending on your level of membership, it's going to cost you $80 to $150 a month. All of you can afford it. I want you – I'm giving you a very specific action plan. 
Go as a dream with an action plan. You know, it has to be reviewed regularly with a deadline. I want you to join Orange Theory Fitness, your local Orange Theory Fitness, not your gym, not your home gym, nothing like that. Orange Theory Fitness, not only will you have a coach, not only will you have a place to be every day at the same time, but you're also going to meet new people who you'll become friends with, who you then might be able to do real estate deals with. You guys see all the side stream benefits from this? And when you're around other people that are also working on the same goal, the probability of you accomplishing that goal goes through the roof. Orange Theory Fitness. No, we're not sponsored by them, but we might as well be. So do that. That's number one. And number two, I want all of you to seriously consider, we're not you know, physicians or we're not any of those things, but I want all of you seriously to consider going low carb. There's been so much research on low carb at this point that it's pretty much institutionalized knowledge that having a low carb diet is a billion times more healthy than just about anything else. Now, you guys can talk about paleo, which is a version of low carb and all the rest of it, but just keep it easy. Go low carb. Some of you, I've heard from, you know, every time we talk about low carb, uh, I always will get an email about six months later, and someone will say, usually a man, I did it. it. I couldn't believe how well it worked. Someone should have told me this before. Why is it my doctor didn't tell me? Because you can actually lose weight if you go low carb and don't even work out. I shouldn't tell you that, but it's true. And if you have some sort of physical impediment, you have a bad knee, you have this, that, or the other thing, if you have to choose between and you need to lose weight, losing weight can be done just on low carb, and then you can get your body back in shape. By the way, you can go to Orange Theory. You don't have to try to be an, uh, you know, an Iron Man. You can go there and just walk. You can go there and pace yourself. Half the, t- half the class when Julie and I go, they're not there to run. They're just there basically to get some exercise in. They're not trying to set any land speed records. You can just go there and work yourself into exercise. I just gave you a plan to lose 20 to 30 pounds easily in the next probably 6 to 12 months. If you go low carb, and you can research it, tons of books online about this. You know, Adkins for Life is the book that kind of got it all started. Uh, if you don't, if you think you have some, if you believe that there's something wrong with a low carb diet, research it yourself and research all the medical papers that have been done on it. It is a 100% healthy, better for you di- type of diet. It just works. And then if you go to Orange Theory, I'm telling you guys, there's your whole physical plan. I just created it for you. Why don't you just copy it? It works. You guys get it? A goal is a dream with an action plan. Now, when will you have? When will you join Orange Theory? We all just agreed you'll join Orange Theory in the next 48 hours. You're not going to worry about it. You're not going to research it. You're not going to plan on it. You're not going to do it next week. You're not going to put it on a list. You're not going to contemplate it. You're not going to procrastinate it. You're just going to go do it. How about that? Isn't that the mindset you need to have? Remember we said don't decrease the goal, increase the effort. Increasing the effort for many of you is stopping the procrastination. As far as the diet thing goes, that's easy as hell. Go on to Amazon right now and get an audible version of Atkins for Life or any of the other billions of books that have been written by doctors about low carb and start listening to one. And you have, I'm going to give you a deadline, you have approximately until this time next week to get rid of all the carby, sugary crap that you've been eating and go low carb do not procrastinate do not wait do not worry do not contemplate just implement and don't guys i'm telling you this is how you have to act in 2019 because if you are going to act like you did in the past you will have a huge huge amount of pain and suffering because your procrastination is going to cost you dearly in 2019 Now, I'm going to give you an educational goal, okay? Let's move to educational. Some of you listen to us every day, and you know we are a coaching company, and you know we have, I mean, obviously I'm biased, but the best coaching programs in the country. If you don't believe me, ask our thousands of coaching members, and I've made it incredibly easy for you guys to become a coaching member. Premier Coaching is $3,000. Oh, you don't have $3,000? No worries. We offer financing. And you can basically have, uh, you can join our coaching program for less than $100 a month. And you can read all about the terms and conditions on our website. Or, you know, when you request a free coaching call, one of our new member coaches will tell you. Our coaching program allows you to cancel at any time. You have to pay, a, you know, if you, t- if you do the lender thing, you, have to, you obviously have to pay a cancel fee. But 
we don't have all the gotchas in our coaching contracts because we know that we deliver a product, a coaching program. And what do you get for the coaching program? Pretty much every single thing you need to build your real estate business. And more importantly, everything you need to do to thrive in the changing market. You get a semi-private daily coaching call. This is not twice a month or once a month. So if you guys want to learn more about that, just go to freecoachingcallsforagents.com. But as far as educational, what you need to learn absolutely immediately is how to formalize the manner in which you go about soliciting for listings. In other words, you're going to need to learn, and this is going to be the honey hole this year. Remember your coach, or if I'm your future coach, that's great too, told you this. You have to learn how to go after expired listings. Now, Centers of Influence and Past Clients is the go-to source of business because it's easy and it offers virtually no rejection. All of you should do Centers of Influence and Past Clients, but that's not even close to being enough. The ultimate problem with Centers of Influence and Past Clients is that it is not dependable or predictable. You do not wake up every morning knowing for sure there's going to be leads for you. You have been fooling yourself into thinking that if your database is large enough that you're going to have the percent, the averages work for you and that you're going to have a leads pour on you because of the, you know, the numbers in Centers of Influence and Past Clients. But where the idea falls down is when the market changes because people pr uh, put off moving. People, buyers stay put. Sellers decide not to sell. And you think that the people in your center of influence and past client list are not in other realtors' centers of influence and past clients' list? How many of you have actually discovered that when dropping off your center of influence and past client gifts, you know, whatever it is, your little tchotchke, you know, some of you guys spend big money on this and drop off pies and all that. And I'm not saying it's a bad idea. A lot of sellers really appreciate it. A lot of owners, past clients really appreciate it. But how many of you have had the experience where you're dropping off some gift that you think is novel, and then you discover that the other realtor in the neighborhood delivered the exact same gift? Now you just look goofy. You guys understanding what I'm saying here? So Centers of Influence and Past Clients is a big part of Premier Coaching. We talk extensively about it, but it has to be a spoke on your lead generation wheel, not your only spoke. You need to learn to go after expireds. Why expireds? And this is under educational goal, and I'm going to give you an action plan in a second. Because in a changing market, here's what happens. Remember, I told you this. The number of expireds goes through the roof. Number one reason why is because sellers are still addicted to the belief that their house is worth more than it is. Number two, listing agents do not have the skill set to counsel the sellers on how to correctly position the houses on the market, so they sell. And that's the big problem. It's, you know, it goes all the way to knowing the seller's motivation, but even when you have a motivated seller, if that listing agent doesn't have the skill set to know how to have conversations with the seller that might make the listing agent, let alone the seller, a little uncomfortable, they won't do it. Most listing agents will avoid having anything, a conversation even remotely resembles confrontation. They will avoid it like the plague to the point where they lose the listing. And that's what happens in a phase two market like this. That's the reason I'm incredibly excited for all of you who are understanding the opportunity that's going to be presented with expired listings. Now, some of you are going to argue with me. Some of you are going to say there's no expireds in my market. And I'm going to tell you there are. You just need to look in a bigger market. You just need to expand your search because the game you guys like to play is when you say your market, you're like thinking your neighborhood of 400 houses. You're not looking at the whole, you know, essentially the MOS and then pulling it in. Maybe you don't want to, you're in LA and you don't want to sit on the, you know, the freeway for an hour to travel, to, to travel 10 miles. I get it. But search in an area that you can effectively work and service that seller and realize, guys, that in a market like this, there's opportunity everywhere expired listings are oftentimes the easiest listings to get. Why? What do you know about an expired seller? Number one, they have to sell. Usually they're motivated. Number two, they have, you know they're willing to list with an agent. Number three, you know they're willing to pay a commission. Number four, you know, where the price, the, the, you know what the price isn't, right? You know what the price isn't. And number five, and this is my favorite one, and this is especially true with higher end listings, the seller's ego is not quite as inflated as it was when they originally listed the house. So they're now realizing that their gold-plated toilets are not really worth a damn thing when it comes to resale. And so they're a little deflated. They're a little bit more willing to listen to somebody who knows how to deliver maybe the bad news that the market has changed. And here's what phase three delivers to you. You guys need to go back and listen to those, mar uh, those, uh, those podcasts. 
And I'm going to give you an example of a phase three market. Miami. I have lots of, Julie and I have just, I don't even know how many, thousands of clients in southern Florida. And the market down there, in Miami in particular, we have some of the top agents who have been selling just zillion-dollar condos, riding high, just living like, you know, rock stars. And now those houses, those condos rather, 30, 40, 50 percent off what people paid. You're seeing buildings, these big buildings, the Porsche building, the Austin Martin building, all these buildings that people were hyping up five years ago, dead. The prices have dropped. They're not selling. The prices are down by 40% in some of those buildings. I'll give you another example. Greenwich, Connecticut, without a doubt, one of the most prestigious and beautiful places on the face of the earth. If you guys have ever been up in the, on the East Coast and you want to know what real money, how real money lives and what like the old American blue blood families, the estates that they live in, you have got to go to Greenwich, Connecticut. It's like nothing you've ever seen before. Mansions that you know, basically make modern houses look like you know, sheds. So those houses have dropped in value, some of them, most of them, by 50%. Um, we have clients up there, one in particular who's become one of the top listing agents, and it is normal for him to go on a listing presentation where the house, the seller paid $15 million or $12 million, and now it's worth half or less than half what the seller paid. But here's what's interesting. In Miami, the example I just gave you, those sellers are still delusional. They're still not ready to accept the new reality. In Greenwich, Connecticut, in New York City, in certain parts of L.A., what you're seeing instead is you're seeing the sellers who are in what we call phase three, where they've accepted the new reality, and they realize that basically is that the market is the market, and they can sell only the house for what it's worth. And that is where we're going to be in most of the country, probably with 18, within 18 to 24 months. You're going to see a switch from sellers who are delusional about their prices or aspirational. Again, as Diane Ramirez gave me that great way of explaining it, which I love. You're going to see a market go from this aspirational you know, uh, pricing to a, a market where the sellers just want to get rid of the houses. Those of you who sold real estate back in the crash – who were, who were not, I mean, even if you were dealing with distress, short sales and whatnot, that's how the market was in like 2000, late 2008 and 2009. That's going to start happening later this year or into next year in many of your markets. Now, in many markets, so this is the educational thing, going back to the goals, right, because that's what we were talking about. You need to write down the goal of absolutely positively learning how to, you have to have your pre-listing pack together. Premier Coaching, we give you a done pre-listing pack. You can personalize it. You need a pre-listing pack. You need to sell something, send something to the seller prior to the listing appointment. Our pre-listing pack answers all the tough questions that the seller would ever ask you. Why would I list with you? What's your commission? What's your listing term? What are you going to do to get the house sold? What are you going to do if I'm unhappy with the job you're doing? Blah, 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 blah. All the worst case scenario questions that a seller might ask you that you live in fear of being asked, we answer for you in the pre-listing pack. You get that to the seller ahead of time. You, you need to learn how to use the pre-listing pack. We give you scripts for it, audio training for it. You need to learn how to thoroughly pre-qualify a seller so you know what their motivation is. You know what their time frame is. The more upper-end sellers are going to be very hesitant to tell you what their motivation is, so you need to learn scripts and figure out what their motivation is without asking the question too directly. And I'm just telling you, there's techniques to it that we're going to teach you. You need to learn how to go on a formal listing presentation. Because when you start listing expires, you're going to be working with people that you do not know. Okay? Again, some of you, most of you, are living in terror of ever being on a listing appointment, sitting across the table from someone you don't know. But you need to realize that in a market like this, the centers of influence and past client Mickey Mouse that does work in a normal market is not going to work in a changing market as well. And so you need to focus on, yes, don't lose the centers of influence and past clients. Keep those people close to you. But the expired listings is where the big money is going to be at. That means you're going to have to learn how to compete. We show you how to do that. Educational goal for you, number three, would be learning how to actually go on a listing appointment, compete, and win. Educational goal number four, you need to learn how to solicit, and we show you many ways to do it, expired sellers so you can actually get the listing appointment. You need to focus on that. So if I were having my first coaching call with you, this is exactly what I would tell you. I would say if you want to kick some serious ass in this marketplace, you need to get your real estate treasure map done. That's kind of an educational goal, and we give that to you. You just got to finish it. You need to master how to go after expires, the whole process. And you do those two things, and you just focus on those two things. I do not care what the market will deliver. I do not care how bad your market's going to get. 
It does not matter what interest rates do. It does not matter what the politicians do. It does not matter. Any of the crap doesn't matter. Because no matter what direction the market goes, there's always going to be sellers that have to sell. Does not matter. Always be sellers that have to sell. There will not always be buyers that have to buy, but always be sellers that have to sell. And as long as there's always sellers that have to sell, they're going in a changing market. What happens is they become very selective who they list with. You may have been getting listings because you knew them at the country club, or you went to church with them, or you grew up with them, or your kid's on a t-ball league with them, or any of these other sort of centers of influence and past client reasons why. But what you're going to start seeing in a market where people get scared, they're not going to list with you just because they know you. They're, they might interview you, but they won't hire you if someone else that you're competing against has their act together and kicks your butt. And that's what happens in a market like this when Guys, get what I'm saying here? Do you see what I said was true? The greatest opportunities are made in the greatest times of change, but the way you seize the opportunity is you see it for what it is. And remember how we, we sort of predicated this whole podcast and the one yesterday? In 2019, do not decrease the goal, increase the effort. For some of you that I just gave your sort of to-do list, you are feeling a little bit overwhelmed. And the reason you're feeling overwhelmed, if I might be so bold as to read your heart, is because you know that you are ill-prepared for a changing market. And you are. So while there's still time, why don't you take seriously what I just said? Why don't you take action on what I just said so you can make this next year and the next year and the next year, because it's probably going to be four years, because that's normal cycle stuff. Why don't you make the next you know, cycle, this cycle, your market, the best market ever? Why don't you make help so many people accomplish their goals and solve their problems, which in this, you know, getting rid of a house is going to be a problem for a lot of people. Why don't you become so good at that that you make so much money that when the, maybe when the market adjusts again, you don't really care. You're good. You've earned your money. And because here's the cool thing in a market like this, lots of buying opportunities, lots of opportunities for you to pick up rentals, lots of new opportunities that start to pop up. Guys, listen, we're here for you. We're never going to bullshit you. We're always going to tell you the truth about what's working in this market and what works in the next market, just as we have in the past markets. You need to listen to what we're saying and understand that we're not trying to sell you some technology platform. We're not trying to convince you to brand yourself. We're not trying to talk you into doing direct mail. We're not trying to sell you buyer leads. We're not trying to convince you to build a big team. Yes, some of you need to add staff. We're not trying to convince you to do anything like that. Those are all trendy things that won't work at all or as well in the market that we're entering into. Any of you who've been in the business for a long time, by that I mean, say, since 2005, you know what I'm saying is true. And here's what motivates me to do calls like this. Julie and I have been in this business for over 20 years. We've been married for 27 years, 28 years this year. I keep forgetting. So we've been married for 28 years this year. And the thing that breaks my heart and gets me motivated, in addition to my two cups of coffee that I had prior to the podcast, is that I do not want any of you to suffer because Julie and I saw so many people that we, know, that we knew and loved suffer. And some of them suffered in the worst ways during the last downturn. Some of you listening, you know what I'm talking about because you suffered. Some of you listening Never actually 100% came back. Maybe you did financially, but emotionally you're still scarred. And I know a lot of you are entering into this next market change, and you're ready for it, and I'm happy for you. But for the rest of you who've not been through that, who've not had the pain of experiencing that kind of stress, you don't know what the hell you're not, what you don't know. So listen to what I'm saying and assume that what I'm telling you is the truth. What other motivation would I have to tell you this, guys? Seriously. It's to help you, so please take action on it. Free coaching calls for agents.com, or if you need Julie or I or myself, it's Tim at Tim and Julie Harris.com or Julie at Tim and Julie Harris.com. We've been getting a lot of requests uh, to do speaking events. The answer is yes. Um, email me or Julie, and I'll connect you with uh, Tom on our staff, and he will uh, check for availability and uh, discuss how all that works. You guys have a fantastic day. We'll talk to you on the show tomorrow. This program has been a presentation by Tim and Julie Harris, Real Estate Coaching. For more information on our real estate coaching and training programs, visit our website at timandjulieharris.com. Remember to tune in weekdays at noon for upcoming shows. And until next time, thank you for listening to Real Estate Coaching Radio with Tim and Julie Harris.